What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another review for you guys today. We were all thinking that this was going to be a mad game filled with goals and one fan base is just going to have to retire from existence at the end of the game for the rest of the weekend. And no, we didn't get any of that. It was a bore fest, it was another nil-nil draw. Chelsea have their second nil-nil draw in the space of a week and to be honest we can't complain too much because over the last year and a half we've had less clean sheets than the red light district and now we've got two in the space of a week. Lineup wasn't too bad. I can't lie, game management was still a bit poor and we do need to talk about that towards the end of the video. But again, before I start this review, before I start player ratings, if you haven't done so already, smash that like button, press the subscribe button as well, and hit the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we release any new content on this channel. Now, the lineup wasn't too bad. Didn't have... Sorry, had to get that out. Didn't have any main issues with the lineup. Playing five at the back made sense. Our defence still looked a bit shaky after the Southampton game. Zuma looked a bit shaky in the Sevilla match as well. So it was good to play five at the back and to try and minimise some of the mistakes that we were having in our defence because throughout the season, what's been letting us down the most? It has been individual mistakes. We played pretty decently for long periods of games and then a mistake lets us down and the game just capitulates from there. So it made sense to play five at the back. Also in the sense of Frank Lampard, he has the habit of producing these masterclasses and switching to five at the back when it's not really going well for us. And, it, and it's worked out to good effect. Remember Everton away in December where we got piped 3-1 away, switched it to five at the back against Spurs, and we went, we wiped the floor of them and beat them 2-0. Same thing with the Arsenal game. We played four at the back. We were terrible. We had to bring Jorginho on in 30 minutes because we were losing the pace of the game massively. We switched it to five at the back, and we turned the game around. Same thing with Manchester United in the Cup semi-final. We were playing poorly in recent weeks leading up to that. I think the 3-0 loss away to Sheffield United was close to that as well. Switched it to five at the back against Manchester United. They couldn't cope with it. And defensively, we were very solid. But I think this focus on our defensive stance has come at the impact of our attacking play. Because our transitions were poor. Manchester United had most of the fights in the midfield against us. Most of the time we were barely seeing the ball going on into our end, but that's again because of how good we were defensively. But going forward, there just was nothing and we kept turning over possession. Uh, there was the wrong sorts of passing. I think Pulisic and Werner still haven't really linked up pretty well with each other and it was really clear to see there was plenty of times where Werner was in space and Pulisic wasn't the one finding him or Pulisic was in space and it was Werner that was the one not finding him. But for long periods of time, the attack just wasn't really doing much. I don't think the attacking substitutions helped either. I think Olivier Drew is being yet again disrespected because the game got to a point where we were just passing out corners again and again and trying to find crosses into the box. And why do we have the best target man in the world on the bench if we're doing that? I don't get bringing on Tammy Abraham for Timo Werner. I get bringing on Olivier Giroud for Timo Werner because then that makes sense because then we're trying to focus more on the cross then Olivier Giroud can come in at the near post. Tammy, for how tall he is, his aerial ability is not good enough and we just barely saw any of that from when he came on either. He didn't really have much time to do anything either because again the substitutions were a bit too late. But it was another example of game management just not helping us out. Another thing that I didn't like was that Mateo Kovacic didn't, didn't get any game time because Kante was flopping in that midfield and it was screaming for the Jorginho and Kante pivot. Kante, I love him, but this is the third game in a row where he's looked a bit iffy and I think he really needs some time on the bench. I'm not saying he's washed or anything like that because start of the season he was excellent. Brighton, he was excellent. Liverpool, he was all over that Liverpool midfield even when we were down to 10 men as well. So I'm just writing this off as bad form, but he should have come off. In the, in the way the game was moving, we should have taken him off. There were so many misplaced passes from him, so many sideways passes from him as well. It just weren't good enough from him, and he knows it as well. He should have taken him off, but Frank Lampard's game management strikes again, it just weren't good enough from him today. I don't get why we didn't bring the substitutions early. I don't get why we didn't change the style of play earlier. We started reverting to crosses. We didn't bring on Mateo Kovacic. We got two straight games with no goals from a toothless attack that hasn't produced any real chance in either of those games. Questions are being asked of our attacking play because it's just regressed over the last few weeks. Even with that though, we still should have won this game 
because VAR came and just kicked us in the ass the same way it always does. Harry Maguire, second game this year against Chelsea where he got away without a penalty or a red card. You all remember February, the BS where he decided to kick uh, Mishi Batshuayi in the balls in front of the entire Chelsea, uh, what was it, the entire Chelsea box and nothing got called. And the same thing happened again in this one. This guy tried to hit the million dollar dream on Aspel Equator. We're talking fucking Ted DiBiase settings. And VAR called it off as nothing. Gary Neville tried to say he was just resting his hand on Aspel Equator. I'm like, are you serious with this delusion? I get both teams were poor. I get the attacking play from both sides weren't good enough. But same way, we could have won this game because we could have had a penalty. But as usual, VAR turns around and ignores the blue side to focus on Manchester United. They called some jammy other foul on Rashford a minute later. And they didn't even look on this. This is the same thing as the Lo Celso incident. The one where he should have been sent off for a tackle on Aspel Equator in the second half of the Spurs-Chelsea match back in February. VAR ignored that, came back 20 minutes like, hey guys, sorry, we should have called that penalty, we can't do it now because the game's gone on, but yeah, ah, oh, bad, fuck VAR, man. They do it well in European competitions, but they do it so poorly here. I don't get how you can have a massive screen, bare screens in a big room set up to see replays and to see decisions that the naked eye can't see. And these men still can't see it with all these replays. That is why I can't trust referees in England. That is why the state of refereeing in this country is in the mud. It's because of poor decisions like this. Let's roll straight through the player ratings because I just want to forget about this match. It was a waste of two hours of my life. In goal, Edouard Mendy, potential man of the match. Excellent saves from him to save us. So much Kepa PTSD pouring in my head during that match because I know Kepa would have conceded both of this. And that shows exactly how vital a decent goalkeeper is. Because we've seen so many sorts of games where we play brilliant defensively. They get one chance and then they put into the net because our goalkeepers are bummed. I think we had, what was it, the second least shots on our goal throughout the whole of last season. But I think the second most converted into the net because of how bad the average of shots to goals were for us. Because of how poor our goalkeeper was. But Edouard Mendy shown exactly how a decent goalkeeper is exactly changes everything because it's not every shot goes in he might actually do his job he had an amazing save in the first half from Rashford an amazing one in the second half as well that would have been 2-0 with another goalkeeper I know that um Edouard Mendy I didn't give him a rating I'm gonna give him an 8 as for Equator as well we're gonna be we're going to be very positive with the defenders on this one. As for Laquay, sorry, I've got a lot of stuff in my chest. As for, he's going to get a seven. Him and Reese James did very well keeping Marcus Rashford quiet. Daniel James as well. As for Laquayta, had him in his back pocket, but we're not going to talk too much of that, about that because putting Dan James in your back pocket isn't that much of an achievement. Reese James, I think, had the better performance out of the two on the right-hand side, but it was an excellent defensive performance all round. Reese James as well, he's going to get an 8-2. Brilliant defensive work. On the right as well, his crosses have been disrespected for so long because we don't put anyone on the end of it. There was like one chance for Pulisic and that was in. That was it. His crosses were so dangerous and I know Olivier Giroud would have put one in the back of the net, which is why it's so annoying that we didn't see him come onto the pitch. Um... Uh, what's his name? Thiago Silva. Seven as well. Very good performance. The best part for me was when was when Edison Cavani came onto the pitch because the first thing he did was keep tight onto him. And Cavani had two very good chances to put into the back to net for 1-0. And Thiago Silva was there for every single chance. He had an amazing performance and read the game excellently. So he gets a seven from me. Kurt Zuma, seven as well. Less mistakes, a lot of good aerial ability. I'm not going to say it was a better performance from him though because it was going to be expected. It wasn't an amazing defensive performance when you just play five at the back because it's expected that you're going to have less mistakes because there's going to be other players there to sweep that up. But it was still a good performance from him regardless. Chilwell as well, good going forward. Linked up very well with Christian Pulisic on the left-hand side. Solid on the, on the back side as well. Didn't get caught too much on the turn. And yeah, best left back on the pitch because Luke Shaw was ass again. Jorginho, passing range was good. There weren't, it turned over a lot, but it weren't really from him. It was just Mat Manchester United were playing a defensive brand of football as well, and it was hard for both teams to try and break the other one down. But I thought Jorginho was the better midfielder out of the two. Good performance from him. I'm going to give him a seven. 
And Golo Kante, he's got to get a four. I can't lie. Passing was so awkward today. So many turnovers, so many attacks killed or potential counter-attacks killed. He should have come off a lot earlier, which kind of just encapsulates how poor the performance was because he really shouldn't have played for as long as he did. Pulisic, uh, five and a half, six. I thought he linked up well with Chilwell. But with Timo Werner, it was a completely different question. The final product wasn't there today. There was a couple of passes that he did miss. Struggled a little bit. Only a little bit. I think he was the one that should have come off over Kai Havertz, in my opinion. Kai Havertz as well, he's going to get a straight five, though, because he really did need to be more involved in the game. And he didn't finish the full 90 as well. But, yeah, he, he needs to... He keeps trying this one-touch play, and it's good. Like, his his play is amazing. But it's just struggled to get involved when it's the case of Manchester United. And they're cutting your passing lanes to the extent that it was happening with Havertz. And he did struggle today, so I'm going to give him a five. Timo Werner, five as well. I would have kept one of him or Kai Havertz on. I don't get why we subbed them both off at the same time. It didn't make sense. Him, as well as Pulisic, could have found each other a good couple times. He needs better decision-making, too. Didn't really see a lot of him in terms of shots or getting in behind, but Manchester United weren't giving him the space to do it. But there just wasn't a lot of involvement from him, so I'm going to give him a five. Tammy Abraham, five. I didn't really see much from him when he came onto the pitch. I really thought it should have been Giroud. Mason Mount, our attack did look a bit better when he came on. It is hilarious that with all the games that we said Mount needs to be benched for, we bench Mason Mount and then we need him to come off the bench. And I like it as well because he's got a lot of un unnecessary slander. So I'm glad that we needed him in this game. It also shows how, how his real qualities are. But he didn't have a lot of impact. I won't, actually, no, I won't say that too much. He didn't have as much impact as you would have wanted to see from him. But the game did change when he came onto the pitch. So I'm going to push him to a five and a half. Hakim Ziyech, only 10 minutes in, but barely any time to do anything. He didn't have much to do. I'm going to give him a five as well. And yeah, that's the end of player ratings for Manchester United, nil, Chelsea, nil. What a drag. I'm going to go billet. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care and up the Chelsea.